What's up everyone? Today I'm going to be showing you how I grout. For the purposes of this video, we're mainly going to focus on just the one wall, but this technique can be used for the other walls or basically any other tile project you might have. To get started, we're going to want to remove all the tile spacers like you see me doing here. Next, we're going to want to clean the excess thin set out of the grout joints. You don't have to get it all, just anything that's protruding past the tile or anything that's on the tile surface itself. If there's waterproofing behind your tile, make sure you don't scratch too deep because you could end up damaging that. Also, be careful not to scratch or damage the tile with your knife. Sometimes tile have these annoying little wax pieces on them that protect them during shipping. We're going to want to remove all of that, again being careful not to scratch or chip the tile. Next I'm going to go over everything with the vacuum, vacuum out all the grout lines, uh, the tub, the floor. I'd recommend using a soft bristle type attachment on your vacuum like this one just to avoid damaging anything. Give everything a quick wipe down with a new sponge and clean water. Next I'm going to tape off the ceiling and the walls. This is going to do a couple things. It's going to protect the ceiling and the walls from being stained by the grout which is really important especially if your ceilings are only textured. It's also going to give us a nice clean even line. I'm taping out about two to three inches here. If you're a beginner feel free to tape out further than that. Uh, six, seven, eight inches even. I'm going to run the tape long in the corners and then I'm going to use my knife to just gently cut it even with the tile. The chemicals in grout are pretty corrosive and they can actually irritate your skin so make sure to wear rubber gloves. When it comes to which grout to use, I would highly recommend using Mapai's Ultra Color Plus FA. I've used just about every grout out there and in my opinion Mapai's Ultra Color is probably the best cementitious grout on the market, especially if you're a beginner, but just make sure it's a sanded grout. If you're mixing less than a full bag like we're doing here, you're going to want to empty the entire bag into a clean bucket. You can use a big mixer if you want, but when I'm mixing grout I prefer to use just a normal drill on the lowest setting. This is going to help eliminate introducing too much air into the grout mixture. With the mixer on the lowest setting, we're going to start by dry mixing the grout thoroughly for at least a few minutes. From here, grab another clean bucket, add some clean water, and then our grout. Again, with the mixer on the lowest setting, we're going to mix this thoroughly for at least a couple minutes. You might have to add a little more water or a little more grout. We're looking for basically like a thick milkshake type consistency. It should look something like this. I've seen a lot of videos where people use a foam type of grout float like this and I know it's probably because it's the most easily accessible. It's sold in most of the big building stores but I highly recommend using a urethane grout float like these ones. I'll leave a link in the description where you can find them. Now we're going to get the grout on the wall. We're going to start from the top and we're going to work our way down. We're going to press the grout into the grout joints using firm pressure. Then we're going to go back over it to remove the excess, holding the grout float at an angle and working at a 45 whenever possible. Repeat this process for the entire wall. If this is your first time grouting, I'm going to recommend that you do one wall at a time and mix small batches. This might mean that you have more waiting time between washes, but it's going to give you more working time and the last thing you want is for the grout to be too set up when you're trying to wash it off the tile.
before I move on, I'm gonna clean any grout that dropped on the floor or in the tub. I'm also gonna give the wall one more look over and remove any heavy excess grout. Now we're gonna grout the area between the tile or the tile trim and the wall. Force the grout in using the long side of the float and then go back over using the small side of the float to remove the excess. If you're mixing small batches and just doing one wall at a time, you're gonna to wanna to wash your grout float and your bucket out at this time. We're gonna wait about 10 to 20 minutes before we start our first wash. The grout should look like this on the top. Starting to set up, skinning over a little bit, then we know it's ready to go. Grab a new sponge and a clean bucket of water. We're gonna wring out most of the water from the sponge and then we're gonna work in mostly circular motions using light pressure. We're basically using the sponge to smooth out all the grout joints. We want the grout joints to be as consistent as possible but we also wanna keep them nice and full. Be careful not to use too much water or pull any grout out of the grout joints. This is what it will look like if you're using too much water or you haven't waited long enough before starting your first wash. The grout is basically bleeding out of the grout line. You might want to wring your sponge out a little bit better or maybe wait a few more minutes before you start washing. I'm gonna use my knife to clean some of the excess grout out of the corners. Then I'm gonna use my sponge to smooth it out like the rest of the grout lines. After the whole wall is done, I'm gonna clean anything I might have gotten grout on like the top or the floor. We're going to use more pressure to wash the tile edge. Force the sponge into the corner with your fingers and work from the top to the bottom. If you ever feel like the sponge is getting too gummed up and it's not working very effectively anymore, just give it a good ring out. Depending on how fast you're working, you might have to wait before you start your second wash. As soon as the grout looks like this, where it's wet in the grout joint, but mostly dry on the surface of the tile to the touch, we're ready for a second wash. Grab a new sponge and a clean bucket of water, and starting from the top, we're gonna wipe, flip, wipe, and rinse the sponge. Wipe on a 45 whenever possible. We wanna try to avoid going over the same spot more than once as much as we can. When we're wringing our sponge out here, it's really important that we get as much of the water out as possible. We should be able to apply much more pressure on the sponge here than compared to the first wash, but again, we don't want to see any grout bleeding out of the grout lines. If that is happening, we probably need to give the grout a little bit more time to set up, or we're introducing too much water. So just like before, between the first wash and the second wash, we're going to give the grout a little bit of time to set up before we wash it a third time. As soon as it looks like this and the grout is dry to the touch on the surface of the tile, we want to grab a new sponge and a clean bucket of water and we're going to wash it again using the exact same technique as the second wash. Now we can pull the tape. 
When you're pulling the tape, you might get a few little dry bits of grout that fall from the tape onto the tub or the floor, so just quickly wipe those up. Once the grout is completely dry, which usually takes about 30 minutes to an hour, I like to take a white microfiber rag and wipe everything down one more time, just in case I missed anything. You'll want to wait at least three days before you use any kind of chemical cleaners on the grout or before you seal it. I definitely recommend sealing grout, especially in shower areas. So let me know in the comments if you want me to do a video on a quick and easy way to seal your grout. Thanks for watching and make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this.